What is up, everybody? Mark on the mic here, joined by none other, and you guessed it, especially if you're watching on YouTube, because you already know, Mr. Ryan Muckenhern. Hello, friends. Just giving, giving the audience a wave. Give them what they want. Well, they've come here today for the 444 Marlin. Because we're going to do exactly that, In give fact. them what they want, because that was a request. People wanted to hear about this one. It's a good cartridge. It's, uh, it's got an interesting little history attached to it. A little bit of up and down. Yeah. It was the king of the castle, king in the castle. You know, that's funny in that movie. I always thought it was king of the castle, king of the castle. It's king in the castle, king in the castle. King in the castle. What movie is this from? Borat. Oh, no kidding, huh? The movie film, yeah. Oh, yeah, I've seen that before. I, like one time. Like, good, it was a while ago. It's a good movie. Good cinema. Really good oh, cinema. Yeah. Yeah. Uh the 444 Marlin, Ryan. Yep. Why do we have this thing? It's a good question today. I understand in the 1960s when it was released why we had it. <clears throat> today, it, it begs the question. I'm not saying it's a lead balloon. Yeah, and I wasn't trying to imply that we shouldn't or be like, why do right. we even have this thing? But it just seems like it was like there was a, all of a sudden there was a need and then there was kind of less of a need. And yeah. It's still cool, though. Oh, it's a very nice cartridge. Uh, I've got a couple questions to go along with it, too, but maybe give us a little, uh, little rundown. Uh, so we had to fact check this before the, the podcast. I was positive it was 1964. Mark was positive it was 1965. Turns out, Mark's right. 1965, the official release of the 444 Marlin and cartridge. Now introduced, designed in 64, though. Yeah, I don't know why I had it in my head that it was 64. And I thought, I thought it was always interesting at that point in time, like... Dirty secret, the Marlin's always been a better rifle than the Winchester. Um, hey <laughs> Winchester had gone through a change in the way that they were building their Model 94 and similar rifles um, in 1964. So you have what we call the pre-64 and post-64 guns. It's generally accepted that the post-64 are less desirable. Now, whether that means they're bad guns or not, is that's not the case. That's not the case. They're still fine guns. Marlin kind of seized the opportunity to really start cranking out exceptional lever guns. And they had been prior to that, too. And actually, from the get-go, I mean, from the first repeater that hmm. they released, I think it was a better gun. Are we talking, like, marketing here? No, I'm talking about build quality, fit, finish, technology. But, um, I mean, is that... I'm, I'm asking, is that why other manufacturers oh. were kind of, like, superseding? They had a better... Game plan going there? Uh, it's, it's speculation. Okay. I don't know. Um, so anyway, we we can't talk about the 444 Marlin without talking about the 4570 government, mm -hmm. which I am enamored by. It's one of my favorite cartridges to shoot, to load, to hunt with. Um, the 4570 had a pretty tumultuous time uh, from about 1910 on. Okay. Uh, we just fell out of favor because some other things had come up that were just markedly better. My first house was built in 1910. I don't know necessarily that that was a catalyst behind its commercial um, <laughs> slumber, we'll call it that, but it could be. Coincidence? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so bottleneck rifle cartridges came out. We had gone largely away from black powder and into smokeless powder, and that thing was a dinosaur. At that point, and, and in a short amount of time, right? Okay. So other other rounds came out that were wildly flatter shooting, lower recoil, like deadlier on game. What would be an example? Of 30 out 6 Springfield. Oh, okay. 300 H&H. Yeah. &H. yeah, I mean, a lot of those, you know, modern center fires. And then you could get them in a bolt gun that had a higher accuracy potential. Telescopic weapon sights came on scene not long after. And so... It was a very different playing field, and the 4570 was like, it enjoyed a, I'm not going to call it a super brief stint, but like 1871 to, I'm going to throw an arbitrary date out there and say 1910. So that's not a short amount of time. We'll go 19 level, we'll round up. Oh, okay. okay. We'll give it 40 years on scene as being um, a spectacular cartridge. And then it just kind of faded into gentle obscurity. Um, a resurgence in the popularity of, whether it was nostalgic or just fun or in the fashion or whatever in, in lever guns and that lifestyle pick back up. I would, I would, I'm not going to say that Marlin exploited it, but they'd come out with this spectacularly powerful lever gun round. And by that, I mean, compared to 4570 
ammunition at the time, like in a completely different universe. So instead of it being a 405 grain, you know, lead round nose projectile at a, an anemic, say, 1,200 feet per second, this is like a 300 grain projectile at 2,000 to 2,100 feet per second. Oh, gosh. So lightning's years faster. Lightning years. Lightning years is not a thing. Light years is. Uh, in fact, it was the most powerful lever gun in the world commercially available for time. At the time. Yeah. yeah. Um, effectively emulating, if not slightly displacing, the 405 Winchester, which was chambered in the very famous 1895 from Winchester, not Marlin. Gotcha. So there's a lot of pictures and webs and lines to connect there. Numbers. Yeah. Everything's like years and things. and Yeah. So the 444 Marlin comes out in 1965. We have this spectacular cartridge. Look at it like um, an XL version of a 44 Remington Magnum, mm-hmm. which it kind of is and kind of isn't. Uses the same bullet. If you're watching on YouTube, we kind of have some... Yeah. Examples here. So we have a 44 Rem Meg and a 444 Marlin. Yes. Um, 429 diameter bullet. So there's always a, a mind bender. I, just, I was going to ask that. It's yeah. another classic case where, you know, we call the, you know, the 44, you know, the 44, and, and this is the 444. Yeah. But everything's a 429. Yeah. What's the 411 on the 429? The 411 and the 429 is that it doesn't have the same, I guess, confidence-inspiring nature. Well, quick, go grab me your 42 Magnum. What? It does not roll off the tongue. No. And it doesn't, no. it doesn't sound beefy. There are rap songs that talk about the 44. And it yeah. couldn't be the 42. No. And we can't round up to the 43. There are some 43s out there. And they're anemic. Uh, so for 44. No, I, I that don't believe that. actually any of that's true. There was probably some reason behind the convention. Um, nonetheless, they used an existing bullet diameter, mm-hmm. which I think was an intelligent maneuver, whereas Winchester's 405 was kind of its own animal. And here's another goofy thing. A 405 Winchester is a 411. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. So it was a goofy bullet diameter in the 405. Okay. The 444 had some teeth behind it from a very powerful handgun cartridge already that was making some big waves uh, in, in the hunting communities, in cinema, um, and in the shooting communities. And yeah, boom, here we have it. This new rifle, this new cartridge, uh, very powerful, and held that throne, that most powerful ever gun cartridge in the world, for a good long time until the modern loadings of 4570 came on scene. And they're still really, really close mm-hmm. in that if a shooter was on the fence between a 444 and a 4570, I'd ask the question, do you have any desire to shoot cowboy ammunition, which is typically a 405 grain um, lead flat nose uh, at a pretty anemic velocity, usually between 1050 and 1200 feet per second? If no, and you don't want to shoot like the really um, fancy Hornady 4570 lever evolution stuff, if no, then get a 444. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a little bit lighter, a little possibly less recoil, um, and a damn adequate cartridge. And w- I've been very encouraged to see a lot of these states that are allowing straight walls, mm-hmm. uh, giving the 444 some some clout back. So our very own Travis Jones, who's been on the podcast before, picked up a CVA Scout, little single shot break action gun, in 444. Um, I, my hope is, is that he hunts bear and deer with it. Uh, it's a delightful little rifle. And I mean, it's cute. He's got a strike fire two red dot on it. Uh, it, just wonderful. And Mm -hmm. he's got it in 444. I love it. Uh, Just another classic case of, uh, I mean, we put this podcast on the books. We're like, oh, we should talk about the 444. And I'm like, oh, we're gonna need some ammo for this thing. And oftentimes the easiest thing to do is to uh, go downstairs and talk to you guys. Yeah. And <laughs> generally, like this is a fairly obscure cartridge. And it's like, oh, yeah, I think Travis has one of those. Yeah, well, obscure. Well, I okay. How, uh, of Travis the, is the person that I know that has one. Correct. Of the big bore cartridges currently offered, or, well, currently is a tricky word. Yes. Of the big bore cartridges that were offered in the big bore lever guns, and I'm speaking specifically to the Marlin 1895 of a few years ago, you got 444 Marlin, 450 Marlin, mm-hmm. and then 4570. Mm-hmm. 
forty-five seventy, at least when I was selling big lever guns, forty-five seventy was unquestionably the most popular. It was probably followed by four fifty, and then followed somewhat distantly by four forty-four. And I, th- I can't help but wonder if people would see four forty-four and they just thought it was going to be some big lousy slow poke. When it's not. It's really not. You know, no. I've got, uh, so I was looking online. I printed a couple things out here. Surprise, surprise. What's that 265 lever evolution going? That's got to be going 22-ish. Oh, let me, see. oh, great. Now I've got my papers mixed up here, Ryan. Um, I believe. The muzzle velocity will be, be listed on this page. Muzzle velocity of. Oh, 20. Uh, 23, six, 20. 2325. Holy smokes. Okay. Now that's cooking. Yeah. High sectional density. Pretty darn decent BC for a bullet of that shape, which is going to result in flatter trajectory, hard hitting, excellent penetrative capability. A, a 265 grain bullet is no slouch. Mm-hmm. Right. So, in comparison, it's actually, in some ways, a better cartridge. Yeah. Now, one thing I did. Um, read Ryan and, and maybe can or can't expound on it, but it sounded like initially the bullets that were, I think, pistol bullets, yeah, that they were plugging into the 444 case, the folks saw some issues with them and then they kind of like, oh, we switch some things up, yes. So, if we took existent 429 diameter handgun bullets at the time, even like a jacketed hollow point. They they may not have been ideally suited for 2,000 feet per second plus. Mm-hmm. 1,500 feet per second plus, you betcha. Mm-hmm. 2K is a whole different animal. And I've heard rumors of this. Um, I've never heard confirmed like, oh, yep, we just took our 240 grain JHP that we were loading for the standard 44 Remington Magnum and we just plugged them into the 444 Marlin. It doesn't seem like logical maneuver, especially... At that point in time, as like American ballisticians and wildcatting and shooting was going on, it just didn't seem like a great idea. Um, but I've read that quite a few times. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's anecdotal, maybe. Yeah. Right. Uh, but that is a consideration. Like it is a different cartridge altogether. Yeah. It shares a projectile diameter. We should understand that if we're going to try to move a bullet that was designed for optimal function between 1,100 and 1,500 feet per second, 1,600 feet per second, uh, it's going to do different things at 22, 2,300 feet per second. Um, so, yeah, when you get uh, a 444 Marlin bullet, uh, and there are some that blend the lines. You know, you could load into a 44 Magnum and vice versa. Um, it's a 444 Marlin bullet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was looking online on the interweb. And I was trying to find a current factory offering in production in 444. Wow, uh, rifle? Kind of, uh, like lever gun. Ooh, yeah. I don't think so. And I, and I, even on Marlin's website, I was like, oh, well, certainly Marlin. I mean, it's the 444 Marlin. And it, the closest I could find, don't quote me, I want to feel like, it, uh, I want to say it was like about 2011. They did kind of like a special... A revamp of the model 444. Oh, that was the model 444 not offering the cartridge. No, and it was a 444 Marlin. Oh, it was. Oh, okay. But, uh, yes. So, we'll talk about the model 444 for a second while we're... Well, it's an 1895, but it's a model 444, chambered in 444, more or less. Okay, I'm tracking. Yeah, it's like the model 36 versus the 336... Minor differences, same chambering. Um, 444. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Uh, as far as ammunition options, maybe there's more. I found Hornady and Buffalo Boar. Yep. Two standby classics in the uh, in the big gun world. Okay. Right? Uh, and the options that they have there, you know, the more we, we talk about cartridges and, and bullets and ballistics and things like this, something that you said one time really resonates with me now. Hmm. We look at a lot of like ammunition availability, and we get into this debate, like, well, yeah, but ammo so much more. Uh, there's so many more options with cartridge X versus cartridge Y. And for a long time, I, in my head, assigned a great deal of merit to that. And I'm, I'm not trying to take away from that merit, but case in point, 7PRC. 
you have four loading options. They're all outstanding for their respective use or right. intended use, right? Um, because something doesn't have a ton of options, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad cartridge. Um, it means that it's possibly very optimized. Right. You kind of yeah. have the right option per category, whether one is, you know, this is intended for, you know, long range yep. performance. So this one is, you know, a bigger pill for X, Y, Z, whatever the case may be. But and the, the long and short of, of like 444 Marlin versus 4570 is there is just simply more guns built to do different things in 4570 than there was in 444 Marlin. Um, truly. Yeah. So that's that. It's a great cartridge. Well, there you go. Well, we've got the long and short of it right here with the 44 meg and the 444, uh, which I've heard the 444 is just described as a lengthened. Yeah. It's 44. I don't know. And it, it doubles down on the power. Yes. Yeah. Anything that you would hunt with a 4570, I think in North America anyways, you should feel as comfortable doing so with a, with a 444. I would say so. Yeah. Well, Ryan, as per usual, much if not everything you say resonates with me. I appreciate you uh, telling us all about the 444. Heck yeah. It's a fun one. Cool. And thanks to Travis for having one. Yeah, no doubt. I don't. No, me either. No. But you have a 4570. Got a couple. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I need a 4570. I agree. I think if you said, Mark, pick one between the two, I would get the 4570. I also like. Well, I, I got so I got to ask why. So this is a great question because this is perhaps, and I don't mean to run the clock out, but this is perhaps where the four forty four met an early demise. Why four forty four versus forty five seventy? Oh, it has nothing to do with uh, performance. The cartridge is you know perfectly adequate, and I would say you know interchangeable, like with the forty five seventy with today's forty five seventy, mm -hmm. right? But that's probably. Why I'd say, well, then I'll just go with the 4570 because there's more options, there's more sure. rifles, there's more. Um, it just seems more convenient. And I also, I guess, if I was going to look at it from a uh, historic nostalgia aspect, I feel like it's weighted more to the 4570. I'll take that. Those are my. That's my. That's my. I, I think reasoning that, behind my off the cuff statement. I think your reasoning is probably what gave the 444 um, a brief stint. As king of the hill, yeah, and it that's like yeah, and then like oh now we got the okay, yep, cool, well awesome, well thanks everybody for listening, thank you again Ryan, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this one, I know I did, um, a lever gun cartridge, lever guns very popular, I know I keep getting long winded and keep this going, but uh, people very interested in lever guns, myself included, after we've podcasted about lever guns and lever gun things, I am I find them um, much more interesting. They are interesting. I'm a lot more prone to getting one. Maybe it'll be a 4570. Oh, that's a great cartridge. But you should also have a 3030, and you should have a pistol caliber version. So like a 44 Mag. I've got some work to do. Yep. Yep. Great. Cool. All right. Thanks again, everybody. Take care. Happy hunting and shooting. Get yourself a lever gun, too. If you don't already have one, or if you have one, get another one. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye. See you.